Now, it's only three more sleeps until that first presidential debate. I can't wait for it. We're going to run it here live on Sky News from 11am Friday. Joe Biden's cleared his schedule, locking himself away at Camp David. He's engaging in mock debates, apparently. His official schedule, released by the White House yesterday, had one item on it. The president will receive the president's daily brief. He often has a day like that. I asked Kristen Tate whether there's a big air of expectation ahead of the debate. Yes, and this debate could have an enormous impact, not because it will change voters' minds, Chris. I think that's all kind of baked in when it comes to the candidates' core supporters, but because the Democrat Party bigwigs will be watching Biden carefully. And if he is able to stand up there and produce a few sentences without drooling or dropping his pants accidentally, he has a chance that he will indeed be the Democratic nominee. The bar is so low for Biden here. All he needs to do, literally all he needs to do, is show that he is in command of his faculties. If he stays vertical, he wins. And then yes. that's a little scary for Donald Trump. He needs to prepare because he can't take it for granted that Biden uh, is going to be a complete disaster because, again, the bar is just so low. Yeah, so Biden's just got to stay vertical and conscious for the duration of the debate and he wins. Uh, obviously, the risk for him are him freezing up, losing his way, making up words as he's often wont to do. So I have him prepped up and fired up and well-rested to try and get through it. What's the risk for Donald Trump? Is there, a, is there a risk of Donald Trump going too far on any issues or has he done that so often that that's not really a risk for him? suspect that's a big risk for him. This is going to be a debate about style, not substance. At this point, everyone kind of knows where both of these guys stand on the issues. Everyone is just going to be watching Biden to see if he can physically get through it. We're at the point now where the majority of Democrat voters think he's too old to be president. So he has a lot to lose here and a lot to prove. OK, so the debate host is CNN's Jake Tapper. Now, usually, uh, as usual, you've got a sort of a mainstream television host who's anti-Trump, uh, but have a look what happened on CNN when someone tried to point out that Jake Tapper was uh, pretty much presenting a, a home ground advantage for Joe Biden. Well, first of all, it's it would take someone five minutes to Google Jake Tapper, Donald Trump, to see that Jake Tapper has ma'am, consistently we're stop this interview if you're keep President Trump my to Adolf Hitler. Ma'am, I'm going to stop no, this interview I'm, if you I'm continue stating, to attack my colleagues. I would like to talk about Joe Biden stating, and Donald Trump, who you work for. Yes. If you are here to we, speak on his behalf, and I, I will willing to have this conversation. I am stating facts that your colleagues have stated in the past. Okay. Now, uh, as I'm for sorry, this guys, debate, we're going to come back out to the panel. Caroline, thank you very much for your time. You are welcome to come back. Yeah, Kristen, uh, Donald Trump's uh, campaign press sec there. Shut down. You're not allowed to say that on CNN that, uh, that their guy is anti-Trump. Of course, but this all just helps Donald Trump, Chris. Trump supporters can't stand the mainstream media. Most of the debate rules actually help both candidates. Obviously, it benefits Biden to have these biased CNN moderators because they're not going to ask him any hard questions. But it helps Trump as well because Trump always does best when he's in the oppositional position. It allows him to not just debate Biden, but the entire biased mainstream media as well. Uh, he really thrives when he's in that position. And uh, his supporters, they just can't stand these smug CNN talking heads. So it's actually great for Trump that these are the people in charge of the debate. Yeah, look, I've got to show you some more and our viewers some more of these people in the media in the US defending Joe Biden, making excuses for his performances and actually saying he's a victim of ageism. But he's totally focused. He's very sharp. They say he's sharp in meetings and so on. Very lucid, well, very well informed. Biden is stately and he comes with gravitas. Ageism is an issue. Americans have a rich history of holding people's physical characteristics against them. He's older. That doesn't mean that he is unfit. And there's a lot of ageism there. Joe Biden may not be able to speak for himself the way that he used to. They want to think to, is to take on government if we get out of line, which they're talking again about. And him, how he is. And that's him, him lying around. I think people should be speaking up for Joe Biden. It is just extraordinary to see them making excuses uh, for Joe Biden, but that is their way.